people from all sorts of different disciplines use topic models to evaluate large collections of documents. They often use automated metrics to decide if a model is appropriate. So then we ask, is automated topic model evaluation broken? And in a word, yes. Yes, it is. And as we talk about this, keep in the back of your mind another question. Where else might automated evaluation be broken? So why is topic modeling evaluation important? Well, topic models remain one of the most widely used applications of natural language processing and machine learning, especially by people who are outside those fields. They're used by political scientists, sociologists, warriors, medical researchers, digital humanists. It, it goes on. In general, these are people who are trying to make sense of large document collections with topic models. And you might say, I am a machine learning researcher and I care about new, interesting methods. Fair enough. But these methods are not being evaluated correctly and yet they are published in top machine learning conferences all the time. And people assert state-of-the-art performance but we have actually found that it's really hard to substantiate these claims. So let's take a step back. What is a topic model and how are they evaluated? Well, a topic model is a generative model of text, specifically a generative model of documents. The way topic model works is by representing each document as an admixture of a fixed number of topics, say 50. Each topic is a distribution over words. For example, if you run a topic model on the New York Times, you might get topics about business, technology, and the arts. So how are they evaluated? Well, at first, the field evaluated topic models with held up perplexity, which is very much connected to the likelihood of the data. After all, they are generative models. But since we don't use topic models to do text prediction, that metric doesn't really make any sense. And when practitioners actually use topic models, what they're trying to do is get an idea of the structure of the document collection. Again, topics are distributions over words. And the most probable words in a topic should be semantically related to one another. So if you have a topic about art, the most probable words might be painting, sculpture, museum, exhibition. In general, that is, they should be coherent. And how do we decide when a topic is coherent? So the most straightforward answer to that question is a topic is coherent when the user says it's coherent. But evaluating the outputs of each model by hand like that, it's time consuming and it's non-reproducible. If I'm trying out different hyperparameters and different model types, maybe I want a number that can show me how good my topics are. This is where automated coherence comes in. There are many different kinds of metrics but the most common is normalized pointwise mutual information, or NPMI. Very simply, NPMI takes all pairs of words in a given topic and sees how often they appear together in some outside reference text like Wikipedia. The more often words appear together, the better. Each topic gets an NPMI value, and you can score an entire model by averaging over the values for each topic. So we have mentioned two metrics. NPMI and perplexity. So what makes this NPMI the better of the two? So Chang and colleagues in 2009 showed that perplexity actually correlates negatively with human judgment of topic quality. Then some other papers following on from that, prominently Lau and colleagues in 2014, showed that automated coherence metrics like NPMI correlate positively with human judgments of topic coherence. We'll get into the exact tasks used to elicit the human judgments of topics later, but basically you are asking people to determine whether the words in a topic go together. So when the loud paper came out, right, what changed? Well, there have been dozens, hundreds of topic modeling variants published since the original LEA paper in 2003. As we said, it used to be the case that you would say, oh, my model's better because it gets a lower perplexity. Uh, but that's changed. And in the years since Chang and colleagues and Lau and colleagues published their works, uh, method developers have really started to use automated coherence metrics like NPMI for model comparison. Basically, it's like blur in machine translation. You have a measurement you believe 
capture something about human preferences, so you use that to rank models. And by switching to coherence over perplexity, there is this tacit acknowledgement that what we care about is human preferences because it was predicated on its relationship with human preferences. So let's get back to the key point of the paper. What's wrong with automated evaluation of topic models? Well, when we were writing a new neural topic modeling paper last year, uh, we were trying to evaluate it and, and looking through the literature uh, to figure out how to do so. And we ran into a bunch of issues. The most important problem uh, is that Lau and colleagues established this relationship between human preferences and MPMI using these classical models like LDA estimated with Gibbs sampling. And they'll get an MPMI between, say, 0 0.1 and 0 0.15. Now, newer neural models are totally different architecturally, and they do much, much better on MPMI, say, over 0.25. And you might say, all right, but there's no real reason to think that human preferences are linear in MPMI, right? Mm -hmm. So if I have a MPMI here and human preferences here, well, the lab paper showed that maybe there's a positive relationship between the two within this, you know, region. But as I get higher, it could be the case that things get much, much worse. And you might say, who knows? Maybe things do get much better. That's the thing. We don't know. When we surveyed 40 neural topic modeling papers, none of them had systematic human evaluations. We're totally flying blind. In the paper, we call this the validation gap. But there's more than just this. When we were writing our topic modeling paper, we realized that there is actually no standard way of calculating NPMI itself. So previous work does things differently from one another as an example. Uh, we said that you need a reference corpus to get the joint word probabilities. Some people use Wikipedia, others use New York Times, others use their training data. So your NPMI may be very different from my NPMI. Data pre-processing, hyperparameter tuning, significance testing, and training data sets, they are all over the place. There's just no real consistency. So when someone claims state-of-the-art NPMI, well, it's really hard to know if that's real and you can rely on that. So this is what we call the standardization gap. To close the standardization gap, we put together a transparent pre-processing and evaluation pipeline. All the code's on GitHub, and we hope practitioners use this in the future. And to address the validation gap, we systematically compared different topic models with human evaluation. The first model that we used was LDA with Gibbs sampling using Mallet. That is the go-to model. It runs quickly on a laptop. It's basically the first option that most practitioners turn to or should turn to. The other two models are neural. We have the embedded topic model, which uses uh, word embeddings. And we have Dirichlet VAE, or a re-implementation of it anyway, uh, which is effectively a neural version of LDA, an LDA estimated with a PAE. Anyway, to tune these models, we ran a computationally fair hyperparameter sweep optimizing for NPMI. And interestingly, by just closing the standardization gap, so just running these models on the same data set pre-process the same way and everything, we found that the embedded topic model ended up having a lower NPMI than LDA. And once we had our tuned models that we could compare, we evaluated the resulting topics with two human evaluation tasks both pulled from prior work. What are these human evaluations? The first task is a simple Likert scale. We ask people to rate the words in each topic as either not related, somewhat related, or very related. The words thumb, crispy, alphabet, and nuance are all not related. But apple, pear, plum, peach, those are all very related. Yeah, and the second task is a variant of pick the odd one out. So if we give you five words, apple, pear, plum, peach, and dough. It's quite easy for you to say that this word is the odd one out, and this is something that we call the intruder word. And you tell, you are able to say successfully that which one is the odd one out. 
and if you struggle with it for a topic then maybe the topic is not so good because if the topic was good and all these words seem to be related it should be easy to pick the odd one out. We made sure by the way to recruit enough people to ensure good statistical power following advice from uh, Dallas Carding colleagues in a paper last year. So what did these evaluations conclude? Well, the key takeaway is that automated metrics like MPMI are not suited for model comparison. They overstate the differences between models relative to human preferences. The best neural model is much, much higher on MPMI than classical LDA. But humans don't consider the two all that different. And we actually ran a bootstrap simulation to determine the probability that when your metric and like NPMI tells you that two models are different. Are they really that different in terms of human judgment? Would humans say that they are different? So generally speaking, a significant NPMI difference is a poor indicator of a significant difference in human judgments, especially when it comes to comparing two topic models. And depending on the setting, a significant NPMI difference may actually mislead you about a third of the time. Okay, what does this mean for topic model evaluation? With this paper, we want to convey that there are large flaws with a standard automated evaluation setup. Blindly optimizing these metrics, it's not working. You might say that this means we need better metrics, that just as there has been a movement in machine translation to deprecate blur, that so too we should abandon MPMI and, and take on more sensitive metrics. And that's probably part of the solution. We also think that our findings present an opportunity to pause and reflect on how we can do human evaluation better as well. And as we said at the beginning, all sorts of people are using topic models and they have different information needs, domain knowledge and so much more. But when we did our human evaluations with crowd workers, and that is fairly standard to do of course, they won't necessarily have always the background knowledge needed to make good judgments about topic coherence depending on the topic, depending on the data set, right? So if I tell you a topic that it has top words variational, conjugate, prior, Gaussian, beta, you might say, yeah, okay, that's a topic about Bayesian inference. But your uncle might say that it's nonsense. And the data sets we use for evaluation are domain general. Uh, Wikipedia, the New York Times. It's not that obvious that people are really interested in studying them. What would the research question be there? These problems point to a third gap, an application gap. There is no such thing as a generic analyst or generic corpus. An important question to consider here is, how can we develop evaluations that accurately reflect how topic models are used in the real world? That is the question, and hopefully we have convinced you that this question is really important. In case we have not, let's quickly go through the key findings of our work. Yes. The dominant way that topic models are evaluated right now is broken. One problem we talked about is the standardization gap, but that's reasonably easy to fix with better transparency and documentation and by making standard the ways of doing things widely available and easy to use. We hope the code that we provide will be useful in that regard. We know that others have also been working on this aspect. We also talked about the validation gap. There are exciting developments going on in neural topic models, but we need to make sure that the automatic evaluations we use actually measure the things we want to be measuring. Measurements of models need to line up with what people care about when they're trying to use those models in the real world. That brings up one last really important takeaway. In machine learning, we define tasks and evaluation all the time. But evaluations don't matter by themselves. They matter because they are abstractions of some real world problem that we actually care about and that needs solving. Right now, automatic topic model evaluation is not lining up with one of the main ways uh, topic models are actually used, which is to help human beings make sense of what's happening in a large collection of text. If we want to improve that, we need to make sure we are talking with those people uh, who are actually using the topic model for that purposes and to understand the problems that they are trying to solve. And that just might be true for evaluation in other parts of machine learning too.